Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Aisha from Kentucky. Kentucky is a state in America, and we have living with us La Yerhamu of Muhammad Ali Clay. And so, 52 years ago, I became a Muslim in New York City. I was working in the filmmaking, and it came from, um, I, because I happened to read in the New York Public Library uh, the autobiography of Munkat Min Dalal of Imam al Ghazali, And when I read his book um, of his life, it really changed me. He said, he was speaking to his soul. He said, up, up and away, if not now, you are on a crumbling bank. And even at 22 years old, I knew I was on a crumbling bank because even 20 year olds know what's going on. And we all know what the spiritual life is, that we must empty ourselves of all but Allah, if not now, when? Up, up and away. And that was the beginning of my spiritual life. And then my husband and I uh, sailed on a boat to Morocco and got a car and drove all the way to Cairo to study at Al Azhar. And we had a little baby girl born in Libya, delivered by Bedouins, and we named her Hajar because we were Mahajirin. You know the hadith from Ankanati's Ratuhi Lallah Rasuli. So we reached Cairo with a two month old baby, and we studied fiqh and tajweed and ahadith in the special studies at Al Azhar in the office of Sheikh Abdul Halim Mahmoud Allah Yerhamal. We had special teachers. And after 10 years of study in Egypt, and we had the chance to travel the whole Muslim world and make films and work in Saudi Arabia, we decided it was important to go into publishing. So we moved to England, to Cambridge, and opened something called the Jamaiya Nasus of Islami, the Islamic Tech Society, in order to publish we wanted to see books in English on Islam not done by the by the Orientalists, by the Mustash Rakeem. We wanted to do the most beautiful books, the Aksani Taqweed of on Islam. So we began uh, publishing books. When we started with Abdul Hakim Winter, Abdul Hakim Winter was 22 years old. He was an undergraduate at Pembroke and he translated for our publishing company the book 40 of the Ikhya al the book on death of Malcolm Mabaduhu. Now, um, let me try to do this right here. And Abdul Hakim, who named my second publishing company, Fonz Vitae, I have to read you what he said. Um, and this goes back to the wonderful talk Dr. Omar gave just a moment ago, speaking about the heart and its importance. And Abdul Hakim said, I'm speaking of your reference to the heart. If the Quran tells us that the heart is the essence of man, so that the Prophet وسلم, on his ascension in Jerusalem to the, saw the highest perfection with his heart, that's Quran 53.11. And if revelation itself descended on his heart, then our heart is the unique interface, this crossing point between the eternal and the finite realms. So the heart is a major thing, obviously. Now, Imam al-Ghazali, he said, know that the purification of the heart comes to ridding the soul of its vices and reforming it with virtue. And that a person who stops at the outward purification alone is like someone who wants to invite a king to his house and polishes the front door and then leaves garbage inside. So you can't neglect the inner heart. So I'm doing many things here at once. All right. So, I'm going to jump to something. What we're talking about today is, and then I'll talk, show you pictures of it, is that um, just a few years ago, um, well, we st I started having grandchildren. I have four. 
And my brother Hamza Yusuf called me and he said, Aisha, my children go to an Islamic school and it's not working out. It's too rote, it's too boring, it's too whatever. He said, what are we going to do? Because we know these children, they're born with the pure fitra. How do, how do we get them to keep their pure nature before they start hearing all these things? So we came up with a plan. The plan was we would work at taking Imam al-Ghazali's books and we would bring them out for children. And everybody laughed at me you know, about this. So, uh, so the whole idea is, is that we want to give children uh, their religion back in their own hands. I don't want to police children. We have to make them feel it's my heart and it's my wonderful, fun way to use everything that happens in my life, the bad and the good, to absolutely have fun transforming my heart and polishing it in order to be ready to meet Allah. And so, we, we, you know, we wanted to come up with something that would really work for children. So, oh, this is just, these are some school, these are some Muslims in Sweden, and we thought by putting all Ghazali's wonderful stories into English, and now they're in 11 languages, these children's books, we would make it more fun for parents to present the inner life to their children. And a Swedish Muslim, these are Swedish Muslim children, called, his name is Sharif, he's putting it into Swedish, and he said, do you want to know something? I finally, with Ghazali, have a language that I can talk to my children in. How do you talk to your children about the deepest levels of reality, about reaching their heart? Yeah, I mean, we owe it to them to give them everything. So Brother Hamza suggested we do this. And um, the way we did it, he said, you know, we have to, um, we have to use the latest edition from the Dar al Minhaj Press 2011 in Saudi Arabia because this edition of, of the Ihya al Umadin has all the pieces in it, all the manuscripts everywhere. I've just been to Bosnia, to Sarajevo, to see one of the great manuscripts written in the time of Imam al Ghazali's life. And so then, of course, I've been publishing Ghazali for a long time. These are books I published in England. But here's the problem that I was having. I'm, I'm not very smart. I'm not a scholar. And when I began reading the books I published by Abdul Hakim Winter and others, they were too hard for me. And I found that I would read it. And for that moment, you know, with the Hadith and the Quranic pas passages and the sayings of the Awliya, for that moment, I was there. I was reaching up to the sky, and then I would shut the book, and I was still me, and I was getting scared after 50 years of publishing books like this. I'm still me, because I don't know how to take these great writings and actually see my life through them. I can't remember them, because the language, because when you speak to yourself, you don't speak in terms of like the transcendent yet imminent. You don't think like that. You actually use simple language to yourself. So then the whole idea of what to do. So then we began the project. And I can't tell you what a long and beautiful project it's been. I have my sister Shetla here. She was there at the beginning. We began about eight or nine or 10 years ago. And what we did was we got really wonderful Islamic scholars like Abdurrahman Fitzgerald in Morocco to start translating the Isha into an English that could be read by parents and teachers. And then I would take each book and sit with it and put every idea in the same order as Ghazali, never leave Ghazali's order. And I marked every one and then sat there and pretended, how would I say this to my granddaughter, Layla? So I whispered the stories. And I'm not a writer or a children's author. But like this project is not mine, this is a loss. And so you're seeing here, you know, here is the book one of Al Ghazali, the Kitab al Ilm. And here is the cover for the children's storybook with 40 chapters. 40, of course, is an incredible number. 40 is re represents how mm, it's the death of the old order in the reintegration into the principle. 
And so then here's the workbook, and we have wonderful designs from Farida, who lives in, in Cairo. She did comic books and things. So we, there was a workbook and a teacher's manual and a curriculum. And the, and the first volume had a, a DVD in it. And then the book of, 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 of Akida, the book of belief, and here's the children's book of belief and the workbook. Then we started discovering Muslims weren't buying the workbook. Well, you need to do the workbook because how do you have fun and do coloring and answer questions? And then it had curriculum for the teachers and the parents. And so then here comes the mysteries of purification and that book. I have these here to show you. And then in each each of the stories, each of the books, we have a spiritual guide. I don't know what culture he is here. Here maybe he's Arab. The, the present one is from Senegal. So your neighbor here. And so in the stories, the children are walking home from school one day and they talk among themselves and say, you know, we really don't know why we have to pray, and our mother is really angry if we're late. We don't even know what the meaning is. This is the problem, is that we're not giving our children the inner meaning of things, and they want that. So, in any way, they discover a secret magic forgotten garden, and they get an old man from the park named Haj Abdullah. Haj Yani is made the pilgrimage to his soul, and Abdullah. And so they got him to come to the garden to talk to them. And he said, I can't answer these questions for myself, but through Imam al Ghazali. So here's some book sets. And then this is the book of prayer, which has come out. It's really beautiful. All right, I'm just going to say something. I just have to tell you all that with the book of Tahara, the book of Salat, I, for the first time in my life, make wudu and know how to pray. For example, in the book of which I have right here. Uh, in the Hajj of Bella tells the children, he says, I'm going to tell you a story. One day, there was a, a sheikh in a town, and coming up to him was a very old man with a cane and said, I want to know, what is wudu? I want to know. And the, the sheikh said, how could an old man like you not know what wudu is at your age? Get out. And he persisted. And then the sheikh made wudu in the sink, and said, now you do it. And the old man got it all backward. So he said, Farra, out. And then he said to his Boab, follow the old man, see what's going on. And the Boab came back and said, I'm sorry to tell you, but that man is the Wali of our town. So the scholar goes and he kneels before him. And he says, what is Wudu? And he says, as you rinse your hands, you ask God's forgiveness for what you have done that you're ashamed of and ask his guidance to do right. When you rinse your mouth, you beg his forgiveness for what you have said. You beg him to only let you say sweet things. When you, what you listen to, where your feet take you. And the little children said when Hajib Della tells them the story, Alhamdulillah, we can now polish our hearts five times a day. See, I forgot to tell you the important thing. In Ghazali's Kitab al Ilm, in the first four or five chapters, he's given you everything. And you can give it to your four year old child. And my three year old Medina totally understands Ghazali. Little Bilal totally understands. And this is what you say to your four year old. All right, you say, uh, Did you know there are two kinds of learning? This is how Ghazali begins the Kitab al Ilm for scholars. And they look at you and you say, Yes, there's the the practical learning for this world, you know, how to do things, but then there's the real special learning. And the, the children look at you, well, what's that? What's the special learning? Oh, that's how to polish your heart. And then the children say, what? Oh, polish your heart. Oh, didn't you know you have two hearts? And then you explain about the heart that beats, and you explain about the real heart, where the fitra is, where the root, where everything is inside and they're listening and then they say but how does that heart get dirty you say oh you know if you don't mind mommy if you don't share your toys whatever it is and then they say but why do you even have to polish it oh because because you know there are two worlds and they're looking two worlds you say yes this world we're in with our bodies 80 70 years whatever uh, this is this world and it has many problems but then there's the next world, which is forever and beautiful, and you have complete contentment and utter satisfaction, utter joy. 
But this world here, you can expect to have problems. These are ways you polish your heart, how you deal with these problems that are sent to you. Now, what you have done, you have already told these little children, the lens through which to see all of reality. There are two worlds, there are two hearts, right? We are given this wonderful task, this fun task, polishing our hearts, and you are your presence, who you really are. You see, children, it's very easy to make them misidentify with their package. I used to watch, in fact, my daughter saying to her little girl, oh, you're naughty, you did it again, go to your room. What do you think happens to that child? They're starting to think, I'm naughty, right? Identifying with it. No, you have to always say to a child, if they do something wrong, that's beneath your dignity. And get them, if they do something wrong, to say, that's beneath my dignity. So that they always know that their real self is the golden heart. And that when you criticize them, you're not criticizing them, but the secondary, the, the, the lower self. And so even one day, my granddaughter, Sophia, took Layla's, Layla's toys away. She went crying off, and I said to Sophia, who took Layla's toys away? And she said, not my real self. <laughs> now, this is, now when, little, when I told that first story to little Layla, she went in our living room in Cairo, when her father was playing the harpsichord. And she said, what's that? He said, this composer is named Bach. And he died about 250 years ago. And Layla went like this. He's not dead. He's in the next world. Now, just to let you know, if you give all this truth to children at about three and certainly by four, right? They recognize it because they're recognizing the truth. And they've got it forever. It never changes. And I, I can, even at three, I had Medina drawing a heart on the floor and lying and she put a dot. I said, put dots for everything you want to polish off. Children really love it, and, and they're, they're so conscious. So the, the story of the purification was very important. And then the, in the book of prayer, Al-Ghazali says, you think prayer is really just moving your lips and doing postures? To start with, when you go before Allah and you have presence of heart, and you do the takbir and you gather yourself so that you're attentive to him. If you say Allahu Akbar, are you just saying that? You know you have to be in a state of awe. When you say Adina Sirata, you have to be in a state of loneliness, guide me. And I thought, how will I ever get children to do that, much less me? So I went and I made a list of all these things and started to try to pray, being aware of the state or the mode of being with each ayah, with each posture. You know what it does to prayer? It makes it fun. It opens out. It becomes full of light universe and so all of these things you know started to really change my life and then uh, this book that's just come out I have it here I, I should I'll just go through a few pictures and then I'll talk about this because this this book has utterly changed my life this is the book of Sakat, charity and fasting and these are just I'm just going am I going backwards yeah, yeah. this is a a book we did with Ghazali for children so that they can really appreciate his life. You know, we have underneath the pictures for children and then we have the text for the parents on the side. I have a copy of that here. This is my granddaughter Layla working in her workbook. And these are uh, some of the cartoons and, and comic strips that Farida from Cairo has done for the children's uh, workbooks. We make the workbooks really fun, you know, and then also we have a children's website has got gazalichildren.org where your children can go and see films, have a book library. It, it's things to do, curriculum of all sorts. We have a pilot school program. I'm going fast because you're all tired and hungry. Pilot schools all over the world. Here's one in Bradford. Here's a group of teachers in San Francisco that get together to work on the curriculum. This is a summer camp. This is a little girl in Jakarta drawing her heart. They all get it in the heart thing. And this is, uh, oh, in Morocco, in Rabat. You know, there's a big gang in Rabat. And um, this is uh, Yusuf Islam's daughter, Asma. This is the Islamia schools in London. And here's in Bradford again. And here is Darul Fik in Jeddah. Can you imagine in Jeddah we have a Ghazali school? And then the, the, the uh, children's website has a cartoon on it 
the heart is going across with the sound of birds, and all these things jump out, and it polishes its heart. And then from the website, you can go and do all kinds of activities, read about Ghazali, do core teachings, look at books, flip books. This is for your children, right? It's really fun, many downloads, and many things. The best part of the whole website is this, and this is our core way of teaching our children. These are children from all over the world who sent in. What we have them do is in our activities, whatever it is, we have them play act it. Certainly, I have them play act all the stories. For example, one day, my grandchildren wouldn't share. So I said, okay, I want you to play act not sharing. And they, you can't have this, you can't touch this, you can't this, you can't that. And they had a lot of fun. I said, now, play act sharing. Medina, would you like to hold my truck? Bilal, would you like a cookie? And then they noticed, oh, it felt good. It was easy to do. I didn't lose anything by it. But if a mother says, share, it sounds really scary, like lost. So every single thing, whether it's anger, we have them act out anger and then act out. They love it because if they haven't experienced it, they don't know how horrible it is. And these videos you see here are from all over the world. Children have sent in the most hilarious films of doing the wrong thing and correcting it. And it's the most visited part of the whole website because kids love to see other kids teaching them. It's some of it, there's a little boy who did a Lego movie of a, a Lego car that hits a tree and then the baby die, the boy dies and he's in the grave and then he's visited by the beings and he answers all the questions. I mean, I mean, there's some girls doing cartwheels and they break a vase and then they say mother's gonna be furious and they're gonna blame it on the brother and the mother comes in and they said, he did it. And then they said, oh, but we lied. And then they go and, I mean, it, it's so much fun to get them to play act everything and make movies. These are two little girls from Australia. Oh, they're so cute. See, they've done the heart that they're hanging around their neck. You know, these are the, there's little videos. And then we have um, a contest, resources, a whole section for parents. This is our advisory committee. Uh, Mustafa Abu Sway on the left, he is the Imam of Al Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. He's a Ghazali scholar, and then many others, people you'll recognize, Ingrid Batson. Just, we've got all the top people because they have to read these things after I do them to make sure they're okay. There's Zainab Healer also. And here's Yusuf Islam, he joined the board too. And then the, there's teachers' forums, teachers' books, and See, here's a little girl who drew it. There's her heart on the right, and then her golden heart here. We teach the children self-observation. And something really in drawing their golden heart, looking at their heart. Look at what children do when they do the hearts. Look at what they write under their hearts of the issues. But what it does, it makes them self-conscious like this. A new game we're playing is, Ghazali mentions that when you have a good thought, do it immediately because the waswis of Kimson right away. So the new game is we have a child give a good thought and the one the other gets to pretend the waswis of, oh, don't do that, go and watch television. So they all got to play this over and over again and they have fun, but the result is what? They, they know that's what they do and they can watch it. You know, I mean, it's all a matter of practice and experience. Oh, this game. Uh, someone here is involved with Wartha, uh, Wartha Dean Muhammad. Someone I've met here, Wartha Dean. Yes, uh, this is from the school, the Clara Muhammad School of Wartha Dean. The little children did these little wonderful drawings. Aren't they wonderful? They can't really spell, but, but it's good. And this little boy, Jetta, he was polishing his heart. And I said, what, what are you polishing away? And he said, when my mummy takes me to the movies, I'm loud and I misbehave. And the mother was standing there and she, she never even knew he recognized what he was doing. Because children don't admit up so easily, you know. So anyway, that's um, here's a page in the workbook. What, what do you feed your, your body? What do you feed your heart? The two wolf stories. All right, this is a story I have to tell you. I know you're tired, but this changed my life. All right, so Ghazali gives you 10 things you can't ever do. But he explains why. Why can't you argue? Why can't you be angry? Because that strengthens the lower self, not the real self. 
It puts dust on your real heart. So then he comes to gossiping. And I couldn't decide in writing the chapter on gossiping whether to include the Quranic passage that it's the same as eating your friend's dead flesh. I thought that is the most disgusting passage I can think of. And so and I thought, I'm going to put it in. It's the Quran, and children can take it. So I put it in. And that night, I went out for dinner with some lady friends. And one of our best friends wasn't there. And they were talking about her father, who in fact is a very, very horrible person. And I had a story that was really funny about how horrible he was. And I told it. Now I'm conscious. And I got in the car to drive home. And I felt sick. I got home. I ran in the house. And I threw up. So I thought, oh, this, this isn't a metaphor. This is actually really going on. We are literally doing it. And then, then when we got to the book of Siam, fasting, I'm working on the book of fasting, and there's a hadith in which the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Two ladies came to him during Ramadan and said, we are weak and tired and we're going to die if we can't break our fast. And he said, take this bowl and throw up in it. And to the horrified look, vision of the onlookers, they threw up pieces of flesh into the bowl. He said, you had already broken your fast because you, you were gossiping. And then, then you have to, this is a, an incredible thought. It's, if it's that bad, why don't we as Muslims make more of it? The other day a mother called me and she said, my little girl came to me, I was at a, a ladies party and she whispered in my ear, she said, mommy, are you backbiting? I said, may I speak to Lena? Lena said, Auntie Aisha, I'm seven, I don't read yet. But my mother read me the chapter on backbiting. I had never heard of backbiting. And I thought, yeah, my own mother growing up, maybe every few weeks said, dear, you don't have something nice to say about someone. Don't say anything at all. Why aren't we saying it every five minutes? Why are Muslims saying, he's a Kafir, she's going to hell, those people. We shouldn't say anything ever. We're in big trouble. We shouldn't ever. So you know what's happened? I can't actually do it anymore. It just stopped. Because by doing it, because by putting Ghazali in the words I speak to myself, I can remember everything he says. So I'm going to do one more story. This is just gossiping, gossiping in the workbook. Oh, these are, stories are so important. This is the story of Ghazali's story of the ant and the pen. It's to talk about destiny. And the ant, as you can see, Ghazali says, he sees the ink in the, and he thinks the pen is doing it. Like, we see the ink of today, we're here, and we think it's because we made a decision to come here. We got here by plane. But it's much higher up. So I did a story for the children in which the, the mother and father aunt. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I've been in front of it the whole time. Why didn't somebody say? So anyway, so one day, um, so I said to the children, there were some mother and father ants, and they told the babies were going to the zoo. The ants were very happy. And then the next day they said, sorry, but the relatives are coming. And like all children, the ants said, you said we were going, you promised, you know, the whole deal we get from children. And then the, after the relatives left, they put on the ant radio, and it turns out that that day a lion got out in the zoo, and it was chaos. And so the parents said to the babies, you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent the relatives to protect us. So my little grandson Bilal and the, the children, we live on the Ohio River. It's the northern border of Kentucky. And they always saw the river, but they'd never been on it. So my husband is a fisherman. He got his boat out in a lot of trouble with the motor and getting gas, and we had to borrow life preservers. And the day came for the trip on the river, and Bilal got sick, so we couldn't go. The next day, it turns out that on that day, there was rains in Cincinnati, logs came, trees, terrible situation. So I went and told Bilal, you know, Allah sent your illness, so we weren't endangered on the river. And you never, never know whether children hear you, but actually they hear everything you say, everything they remember. And then we have a little Islamic class on Sundays, and we were doing this story, and he told the entire story to these other little children, because he totally gets the 
that you have to trust when there's a disappointment that Allah has something better in mind. Anyway, so quickly get to this one last thing I want to show you. Here are the children making ants. We did a, an ant activity. And here they're making more ants. Oh, these are too many stories to do. Because I can't do all of the stories. That's Layla. Look, Layla's lady with the heart and the high heels. Yeah. Now this is a beautiful story Ghazali says. He says that mm, the good teacher the whales in the sea, or the deep, the fish in the sea, and the ants pray to God to bless the teacher. And the angel's wings, you know, brush them. And so, Ghazali makes, look at the children's drawings. Isn't that fantastic, the ant and the whales? And so, anyway, Ghazali makes a big point of saying, we are all teachers. He ends the book of knowledge with two trees, a straight tree and a crooked tree. So we're all teachers, and you tell the children, don't you copy other people? You're teaching everybody, so you want to be a straight tree. Let's just get through. This is this is a new, um, isn't he beautiful? I met him in Chicago. He's from Senegal. He's the model for this book. That's, that's when the scholar is throwing the old man out. This is polishing the outside of your house and not your inside. These are other books we've done. Well, just to let you know, the Ghazali Project, here, here it's being presented in Jakarta. And in, in, in Morocco, they did a whole event for it in Marrakesh, which was beautiful. Here in Bradford, England, you know, bookshops. You know, Bosnia, we're working on it in Bosnia now. This Bosnia University has just um, taken permission to dig through the book of a belief in the children's book of belief into Arabic for their school system. It's in 11 languages now. Can you imagine that? All by, we've only been going for a few years. This is the, the this is done by King Faisal's granddaughter. She's done the, an Arabic version. And then the best story of all is, her name is Saira, um, Saira, Lubna Saira. And she lives in Boston, but she's from, Pakistan, and she and her family have translated the books all into Urdu. Here she is, and they're already being used in Urdu uh, in, in Pakistan rural schools. And look, her illustrations are better than ours. Look, these are the Urdu illustrations, much better than ours. Look at that. Fabulous, right? And I, I can't go on because I know you all want to go and eat and everything else like this. Oh, oh, okay, this is how I end, all right? Uh, how, you're not going to come up and talk, are you? No, all right. So, um, the book of Zakat. Ask yourself, when you think of Zakat, what do you think of? Two and a half percent at this time, there's many Zakats. This is the last start, I never finished. And so, this changed my whole life, my whole perspective on reality. So, in the story, the children are on the merry-go-round, and they notice other children who can't afford it. They don't have any change, and they're looking longingly. And so they, they, they notice that. And then they go to visit Haji Abdullah in the garden, and on the way there, there's the old man saying, Lila, Lila. So they go into Haji Abdullah, and they're sitting in the garden, and they say, why are some people rich and some people poor? And Haji Abdullah said, Actually, everything belongs to Allah. When he's saying lila, it's li for the sake of God, and li because it belongs to God. And he said, everything belongs to God. Our, our, our skills, your eye doctorness, my energy, none of it is ours. Everything we have, everything is on loan, and it's in a manner. And everything is given for us only to serve with, period. And so... So you think, oh my goodness. And so Ghazali tells a story. Well, that's another story. A, he tells a story that you'll never forget. And you can get your kids to act this out. Once upon a time, the king, Yani Allah, this is the last. The king said to his servant, who, who he gave lands to, with trees and fruit and vegetables and meat, go and feed the poor people in the village. Meaning, it's my, my food. You are simply taking it as your trust. So the man gets to the village and he has forgotten. He thinks 
his work is his own. How many times I have given money and thought it's mine? I didn't know it wasn't mine. So he goes and he holds the food up high and the people feel really low and he makes them feel low. And they're even thinking, are we now beholden to him? And then this is Ali showing you how you don't give. And then he gave to another man the knowledge of money. And he says to King, go to the town, there's a poor widow. She needs money to educate her children. And he, look, he holds the money low. And he says, oh, blessed lady, do me the honor of receiving this gift from the king, right, in order that I may fulfill my trust to God. It's not about handing people food for one day. It's a matter of our completing our trust, our amana, our loan back to God. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum.